Every man and woman prays in their own language, and there is no language that God does not understand. Duke Ellington. Good morning. It's so, I'm so happy to see everyone here. We welcome you here live. We welcome people who are virtually here. Uh, happy to see you. If you're virtually here, you might wonder why all the people behind me are wearing yellow. That is because today is the day that we begin Yard Sale Week. I know this comes as a big shock and surprise. Um, I did have a nightmare last night that there were only three people to help me set up the sanctuary. And I woke up in a flop sweat. So please stay and help me san set up the sanctuary. Um, but now is the uh, time we're going to be at, right after church. Susan Hollinger has a nice coffee hour for us. But there will also be a lot of work here, setting up the sanctuary and bringing stuff in. So if you are coming to work at yard sale, that's wonderful. If you can't stay, then we ask you to pray. Pray for us this whole week because it's going to be 90 degrees on Wednesday. Um, I know, isn't that the saddest thing? If you are coming this week or you're just coming on Saturday, in the narthex there are these info letters. If you know it by heart already, don't take it. But if you would like some new updated information, it's all there. Um, and that is all the inf Oh, no. I still need, shameless plug, a cashier, a bagger, and some help throughout the week to help clean up the kitchen after these very nice people have provided us with lunch. So that is my news. Paula, you have some news. Uh, good morning. So yesterday was the final meeting of our 2023-2024 confirmation program. And we have our new confirmands here with us who received their certificates of completion yesterday. We had a lovely little ceremony. Thanks to Pastor Kurt. Oh, yeah, whoever was starting to clap, you can absolutely do that. We're missing Clifton. Yeah, we're not missing. We're missing Clifton. But if we can have Jonah, Simon, and Adam just stand just as a favor to me, please, come on, just stand up really quickly. Three, two, one, sit. There you go. Good. Yeah. We will be celebrating with these young men and also the most awesome Clifton Cleveland, who is not in the house at the moment, on June 2nd. So, is he there? No? Maybe? <gasps> Clifton, there he is. These young men put together a pollinator garden along with uh, nine youth from Marchuria that is on the way up the hill called the Bee's Knees. We have a sign for that. And put together 54 feed the freezer meals yesterday, both vegetarian and meat. So You and Bill and Jen? And Jen. Who were, who were the oh, adults no, Just the boys did the meals. Oh. We stood back and watched. So it was fun. It was interesting. And... A new definition of al dente. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was great. And so I thank Bill Stockwell, too, for his help in all of this. So thank you very much. Is there anything else? No? Okay. John. Let me just go to this one. There was a notice in the email bulletin <laughs> stating that I was responsible for building that petition back there. That's not true. It was a two-man two effort. It was Paul Seyfried and me that built it. Thank you. Dynamic duo. Are there any other announcements? Here comes Russ with walking with purpose. With purpose. The long-awaited men's breakfast is going to be Tuesday morning. And please... Bring your wives. This is the season closure, and we'd love to have the ladies join us as well. We'll be here for yard sale anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. Thanks. <laughs> but he'll be done by ten. <laughs> yeah, we always get out of we seven thirty, and we get out of the way of uh, respite. Yeah. No, not so. respite. The cooks for lunch here. Oh. Mm. Okay. What's well, usually the other? Yeah. But. Come, eat, have a good time. 
Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Then with the yard sale in mind, from um, the way, Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives power to the tired and worn out and strength to the weak. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Bless the Radiant One, O our souls. O heart of our hearts, you are so very great. You, O Holy One, are clothed with justice. You are clothed with mercy, arrayed in light as your fine attire. You stretch over the heavens like a tent, your radiance covering the waters. 
You shine through the clouds and ride on the wings of the wind. The wind, like the breath of life, carries your word. Fire refines the dross of our souls. Your spirit, O Holy One, inspires us, challenges us, confuses us, and empowers us. Be with us as we gather for this time of prayer and worship, for reflecting upon your Holy Spirit moving in our midst, your Holy Spirit that inspires, challenges, confuses, and empowers. Hear the prayers of our hearts, those we say out loud, the ones deep within us, and those which are sighs and groans too deep for words. We gather in a tradition of many peoples with many languages, and in the language that is most familiar with us, we pray in the way Jesus taught, saying,
the kids up. I'm so lucky I have kids again today. Hi guys. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for asking. Here comes John. All right, guys. I don't have a much talking time for you guys today, but I do have a thinking time. Um, so today, the Bible passage that Pastor Kurt's going to talk about is this weird story in the Bible about bones. Do you know any story about bones in the Bible? Nope. Nope. It's a really trick. It's an it's a elusive one. So the story about bones is there's this guy by the name of Ezekiel and God talks to him and he says to Ezekiel, there's this big expanse of land, a valley in between two mountains, and it's full of bones. Now last year we actually talked about this, believe it or not, and we talked about dinosaur bones. Can you imagine just a valley full of dinosaur bones? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, uh, archaeologists find it. These weren't dinosaur bones. These were human bones. And so can you imagine a huge valley full of human bones? That's pretty gross, isn't it? Yeah, kind of disgusting. So what God wanted Ezekiel to do is he wanted him to go to that valley of bones. Where are your bones, John? Yep, right there. Um, and he wanted him to talk to the bones. And what do you think Ezekiel did? Do you think he talked to the bones? Yeah, it's exactly what he did. And then you want to know what happened? Dana, you can make a wild guess. What happened to those dry bones? Say that again. Here, take it. Reformed into humans? That's exactly what happened. They, reform, they reformed themselves into humans. That is a weird story, is it not? Yeah. So you think about why did God tell this story, and, or why is the story in the Bible? And the, the thing that I think today is that those bones, that two things. One is that God, don't ring a ding, <laughs> that God is the one who made those dry bones come back to life, and God can do that to you. Now, not like a hundred years, thousands of years ago, now. Do you think you have dry bones? Do you think you have dry bones? Yeah. You do? <laughs> you do? So what I think dry bones are when thing, you're feeling yucky, when you're feeling sad, or when you're feeling lonely, or when you're feeling bored. Are those good feelings? No. No. Those aren't good feelings for adults. Sometimes those yucky feelings might be um, depression or being bitter about something. Those are super yucky feelings. But this is what can happen. God made those bones come to life, and God can make our dry bones come back to life. They, he can bring that sadness into happiness. He can bring that boredom, and you can find something fun to do. So how do you think we can do that? How do you think we can help? God told us, how can we make those dry bones come to life? It's really simple. Um, you can pray. Yes, you can pray. You can just believe in God and have your faith. You gotta keep the faith. And if you keep the faith, your bones will come alive. John, can you do me a favor? John, can you do me a favor? Can you jump from here to there, and make your bones strong? Great. And will you guys pray with me? You guys take it. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for showing us. Thank you for showing us how we can bring our dry bones back to life. How we can bring our dry bones back to life. By praying, By praying. and keeping the faith. And keeping the faith. Amen. Amen. That's good.
Good morning. Do you hear me all right? No? Need to speak louder? Move this closer? Is this better? Yes. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> I miss Tom because he's the one that always cued me in when I didn't speak loud enough or something. So, <laughs> Anyway, we have a very interesting text today. As, as you know from Roberta's presentation with the children. In the early 6th century, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon captured Jerusalem, and he took the leading citizens of Jerusalem as hostages and resettled them in Babylon along one of the tributaries of the Euphrates River. And Ezekiel, a priest, was one of these hostages. And after four years, Ezekiel got a call to be a prophet. And he accepted the call and was a prophet for the next 20 years. And the story of his call is a very interesting text that you might find really interesting to read. It's very well known. It's an important text. Ten years after Jerusalem was captured, it was totally destroyed. And Ezekiel, over in Babylon, was profoundly affected by this destruction. And we see it in his prophecies. Before that, his prophecies focused on God's judgment, the sins of the people, and people straying from believing that God was the Lord. But after that destruction, Ezekiel just turned over a new card and he began to preach about and prophesy about the restoration, that the people would return to Jerusalem, the land would be restored, the city would be rebuilt, villages would grow again, crops would flourish. So that was a complete change about. Now, the priest, we're reading Ezekiel 37, which is such a famous, famous text. You'll all recognize it, I'm sure. But right before that, in 36, chapter 36, Ezekiel is talking about this restoration that's going to happen sometime in the future. And 37 continues that hopeful restoration, but this time it affects people. So listen now for Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 10. And Ezekiel is telling us about the vision that he received. And he says, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and God brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, God led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? Ezekiel answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then God said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel goes on. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath, 
prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Ezekiel goes on. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. This is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Holy and loving God, source of all life, source of all breath, source of the wind, source of our gifts, our skills. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of each and all of our hearts draw us, connect us, bring us together as your living body in the world May we, may we be drawn closer to you and to your good creation. We pray this in the good and strong name of the one who gathers us. Amen. Dry bones. Spirit of the living God. Dry bones. Spirit of the living God. When I was 22 years old, I felt lost, confused. My first job out of college, upside down, inside out, miserable, despairing. I thought I had my life in order. I had planned so well, and it was harder than I had imagined lost, confused, struggling, dry bones, one might say. Has anyone else ever felt anything like that before? Like you made plans and it didn't, didn't work out how you thought it would? Anyone? Am I alone in this? Dry bones. As Nancy and Roberta were talking, I think this is, I imagine that this is something of the context in which Ezekiel is talking about, of things not having worked out. The Jerusalem was built, this holy temple, it was beautiful, and then things fall apart and it's rumble, rubble, and there's no way to see how it could possibly go forward in a meaningful way. And where in the world is the? Where is the spirit of the living God when everything is? Lost, despairing. Don't worry, choir, you've got a part coming up. Lost, despairing, no hope. And Ezekiel tells the story of them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now, them bones, them bones, them. Now, them bones, them bones, them. Now, there's a rattling. Can you guys rattle, 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 rattle? Thank you. <laughs> and the bones come together. The sinews connect them. There's muscle and there's skin that's on them. And they're frozen chosen. They're not moving. So, Ezekiel has another task. First of the dry bones come together. 
Dry bones? Dry bones. Spirit of the living God, now go to the dry bones. Two tasks Ezekiel has, one with the dry bones, one with the spirit of the living God to bring life, to bring breath, to move amongst the things of the world, the tangible things. Spirit of the living God to move amongst them. Here at KCPC, walking around this morning before worship time, you go into classroom one, two. What could you possibly see on a Sunday morning in that beautiful classroom? Dry bones. Boxes of tangible stuff. You walk into the fellowship hall. What do you see? Dry bones. You got to, in the course of this week, we see all this care of people moving this to that, to this to that, sorting it out, arranging it, bringing all the computer monitors to one place. All the sofas and the, and, and the garden materials, it all comes together in one place through a, lot of, through a lot of care. These tangible things, these dry bones, there's a lot of human spirit that goes into working with those dry bones. But that's not the only thing. This is no ordinary yard sale. There are other yard sales. There are big yard sales. There are tangible things that are great finds. There are other nonprofit organizations. And my hope for this week, in the midst of all the in the midst of all the inspiring, confusing, challenging, empowering. Ready choir? That we may remember to call upon the Holy Spirit, to say, come Holy Spirit. that we may remember that we've got a special sauce, that this is a congregation that is knit together like a prayer blanket, that we take the ordinariness of our own lives and our own hurts and our own questions and our doubts, we take all the stuff people want to give away, dust it off, sort it out, clump it together, and then maybe we say, Two things. Stuff. Stuff is made meaningful by relationships. It's the people, not the things. Things are sentimental, they're meaningful, they're beautiful, they carry meaning. Sometimes stuff breaks accidentally. The stuff is made meaningful by us. And I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Sometimes the spirit is there in confusing ways. For a 22-year-old in their first job that doesn't work out how they thought it would work out, upside down, inside out, turned all around. Years later, perhaps, the confusion was the gift of the Holy Spirit saying, eh, you had good plans, but... I've got a special sauce for you. Dry bones. Spirit of the living God.
all that we have and all that we are comes from the one who creates us. Without the Holy Spirit, we would be, we may have nice clothes, we may have nice skin, good sinews, muscle tone, strong bones filled with calcium. Without breath, without breath. I invite the ushers to receive this morning's offering. The hand of love came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit and set me down in the middle of a vast wilderness. It was full of bones. Love led me around by the hand. There were so many. And they were so fragile. Love said to me, Oh, earth person, can these bones live? Bless these gifts, O oh God, these tangibles that we gather together to connect, to bring your creation, to be a place of healing, of reconciliation, of life, of joy, of praise. Bless these gifts and bless each of us, bless this congregation that we may receive your Holy Spirit, that we may breathe, and that our breath may be a blessing. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
We have gathered on this Pentecost day, remembering the coming of the Holy Spirit. And as we go from here, I offer you an ancient blessing that you may be a blessing to those who you meet along the way. May the Holy One bless you and keep you. May the face of the Holy One shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Holy One look upon you with tender, loving kindness and grant you a peace, a courage, and a bell-ringing joy like you've never known before. <laughs>